Welcome to the Bible Quiz. Get ready to dive deep into the Old Testament with 25 of the toughest questions designed to challenge even the most knowledgeable Bible enthusiasts. Explore the profound stories, fascinating characters, and divine wisdom that form the foundation of our faith. Before we begin, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Your support helps us spread the Word of God and keeps you updated with more biblical content. Are you ready to test your Old Testament knowledge? Let's embark on this incredible journey together. Let's get started. Question 1. Who was the first patriarch of Israel? A. David B. Moses C. Solomon D. Abraham you get 10 seconds. That's D, Abraham. In Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 to 3, Abraham's faith and obedience to God's call made him the first patriarch of Israel. He is revered as the father of the Jewish nation, and through his descendants, the promise of God's covenant was carried forward, establishing the foundation of Israel's lineage. Question 2. What was the fifth plague that God sent upon Egypt? A. Death of livestock B darkness C locus D boils you get 10 seconds that's a death of livestock this plague caused the death of Egyptian cattle, horses, donkeys, camels, herds, and flocks, while the livestock of the Israelites remained unharmed. This event demonstrated God's power and His ability to protect His people while bringing judgment upon their oppressors. Exodus chapter 9, verses 1 to 7. Question 3. What was the purpose of the scapegoat on the Day of Atonement? A. Burned B. Kept holy C. Sacrificed D. Carried sins away You get 10 seconds. That's D carried sins away. In Leviticus chapter 16 verses 20 to 22, the high priest would lay his hands on the goat's head, confessing the nation's sins over it, and then send it into the wilderness. This act represented the removal of sin and guilt from the community, emphasizing God's provision for atonement and the purification necessary to maintain holiness among his people. Question 4. Which judge vowed to sacrifice the first thing from his house if he won against the Ammonites? A. Ehud B. Gideon C. Jephthah D. Samson You get 10 seconds. That's C, Jephthah. Tragically, Jephthah's only daughter greeted him upon his return, leading to his painful commitment to the vow. This story highlights the seriousness of vowing to God and the consequences of speaking rashly. Judges chapter 11, verses 30 to 31. Question 5. Who was the priest who raised Samuel? A, Eli. B, Aaron. C. Zadok. D. Melchizedek. You get 10 seconds. Of 
That's A, Eli. Eli the priest raised Samuel after his mother Hannah, dedicated him to the Lord in gratitude for answering her prayer for a child. Eli guided and mentored Samuel in his early years at the tabernacle in Shiloh, setting the foundation for Samuel's future role as a prophet and judge over Israel. 1 Samuel chapter 1 verses 24 to 28. Cherished friend, hit subscribe and stay tuned for more great and engaging content in the future. Question 6. Who was the prophet who confronted David about his sin with Bathsheba? A. Elijah B. Nathan C. Elisha D. Samuel You get 10 seconds. That's B, Nathan. Nathan used a parable of a rich man who took a poor man's only lamb to illustrate David's wrongdoing. This confrontation led to David's repentance and is a powerful example of the role of prophets in holding leaders accountable to God's standards. 2 Samuel chapter 12, verses 1 to 7. Question 7. What did the spies sent by Moses bring back from Canaan to show its fruitfulness? A. Figs B. Grapes C. Pomegranates D. All of the above You get 10 seconds. That's D. All of the above. In Numbers chapter 13, verses 23 to 27, the spies sent by Moses brought back a cluster of grapes so large that it had to be carried on a pole between two men. They also brought pomegranates and figs to demonstrate the fertility and abundance of the promised land. Question 8. Who was the king who established Jerusalem as the capital of Israel? A. Saul B. David C. Solomon D. Rehoboam You get 10 seconds. That's B. David. In 2 Samuel chapter 5, verses 6 to 9, King David conquered Jerusalem from the Jebusites and established it as the capital of Israel. By doing so, David not only secured a central and strategically located city, but also laid the groundwork for Jerusalem to become the religious and political heart of Israel. Question 9. Who was the king who reigned in Jerusalem for 41 years and did what was right in the eyes of the Lord? A. Asa B. Saul C. Josiah D. Solomon You get 10 seconds. That's A. Asa. Asa worked to rid the kingdom of idolatry, removed his grandmother from her position as queen mother due to her idolatrous practices, and repaired the altar of the Lord. His commitment to religious reform and faithfulness to God brought stability and spiritual renewal to Judah. 1 Kings chapter 15 verses 11 to 14. Question 10. Who was the leader who helped the Jews rebuild the temple in Jerusalem? A. Nehemiah B. Ezra C. Zerubbabel D. Joshua You get 10 seconds.
that seed, Zerubbabel. As a governor of Judah and a descendant of David, Zerubbabel played a crucial role in restoring Jewish worship and identity after the exile. His leadership in laying the foundation of the new temple marked the beginning of the Jews' physical and spiritual restoration in their homeland. Ezra chapter 3, verses 8 to 13. Question 11. What did Nehemiah do when he heard about the broken walls of Jerusalem? A. Ignored it. B. Celebrated. C. Wept, fasted, and prayed. D. Rebuilt the walls immediately. You get 10 seconds. That's C. Wept, fasted, and prayed. In Nehemiah chapter 1, verses 4 to 11, Nehemiah wept, fasted, and prayed upon hearing of Jerusalem's broken walls. He gained permission from King Artaxerxes to rebuild them, demonstrating his concern for his people and reliance on God, leading to the city's successful reconstruction and the revitalization of the Jewish community. Question 12. What did Esther do to save her people from destruction? A. She led an army into battle. B. She prayed and waited for a miracle. C. She moved the Jews to a safe place. D. She revealed a plot against the Jews to the king. You get 10 seconds. That's D. She revealed a plot against the Jews to the king. In Esther chapter 4, verses 15 to 16, Queen Esther risked her life by approaching King Xerxes, uninvited to expose Haman's plot against the Jews. Her bravery led to the king's intervention and the protection of her people, highlighting the importance of courage and justice. Question 13. What did Job's wife suggest he do after all his suffering? A. Pray. B. Curse God and die. C. Leave his faith. D. Seek medical help. You get 10 seconds. That's B, curse God and die. Her statement reflects her despair and inability to understand Job's steadfast faith amidst his trials. Job's response, however, demonstrated his unwavering commitment to God, rejecting her suggestion and maintaining his integrity despite his profound pain and confusion. Job chapter 2, verse 9. Question 14. Which psalm is known as the Shepherd Psalm? A. Psalm chapter 23. B. Psalm chapter 51. C. Psalm chapter 100. D. Psalm chapter 150. You get 10 seconds. That's A, Psalm chapter 23. In this beloved psalm, David depicts the Lord as a shepherd who provides, guides, and protects his flock. The imagery of green pastures, still waters, and the shepherd's comforting presence during dark times reassures and offers hope, emphasizing God's care and provision for his people. Question 15. In Ecclesiastes, what does the author say is the whole duty of man? A. To gain wisdom. 
B. To seek pleasure. C. To accumulate wealth. D. To fear God and keep His commandments. You get 10 seconds. That's D, to fear God and keep His commandments. This summary follows an exploration of life's fleeting and often puzzling nature, emphasizing that true meaning and fulfillment are found in reverence for God and obedience to His will. This final admonition underscores the importance of a God-centered life as the key to understanding and purpose. Question 16. In the Song of Solomon, what does the bridegroom compare the bride's teeth to? A. A set of ivory. B. A row of stars. C. A flock of sheep. D. A string of pearls. You get 10 seconds. That's C, a flock of sheep. This imagery highlights the bride's beauty, with her teeth described as clean, white, and perfectly paired, reflecting the poetic and affectionate language used throughout the book to express love and admiration. Song of Solomon, chapter 4, verse 2. Question 17. In Isaiah, what is described as being like scarlet and shall be as white as snow? A. Sins B. Hair C. Blood D. Clothes You get 10 seconds. That's A. Sins in Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18, sins are described as scarlet but will become as white as snow. This verse emphasizes God's promise of forgiveness and purification for the repentant. The contrast between scarlet and snow illustrates the transformative power of God's grace, offering hope for redemption and renewal. Question 18. In Lamentations, what does the author compare Jerusalem to? A. A queen. B. A widow. C. A bride. D. A child. You get 10 seconds. That's B, a widow. This poignant imagery captures the profound sense of loss and mourning for the city after its destruction. The comparison to a grieving widow underscores the depth of sorrow and the dramatic reversal of Jerusalem's fortunes, reflecting the overall theme of lament in the book. Lamentations, chapter 1, verse 1. Question 19. What did Daniel and his friends refuse to eat in Babylon? A. Bread B. Fruits C. Vegetables D. King's food and wine You get 10 seconds. That's D, king's food and wine. Their decision was based on their desire to remain faithful to their dietary laws and honor God. This act of defiance demonstrated their commitment to their faith and resulted in God's favor as they appeared healthier and more robust than those who ate the king's provisions. Daniel chapter 1 verse 8. Question 20. 
What did Hosea name his second son, symbolizing that the Israelites were not God's people? A. Jezreel B. Loami C. Emmanuel D. Lo Ruhama You get 10 seconds. That's B, Lo Ami. In Hosea chapter 1, verse 9, the name symbolizes Israel's broken covenant with God, resulting in temporary rejection. However, it also foreshadows eventual restoration and reconciliation, highlighting themes of judgment and hope. Stay with us until the end of the video to see how many Bible quiz questions you got right. Don't forget to note your score and share it with us in the comments section. Let's explore and learn more about the Bible with these fun and interesting questions. Question 21. According to Obadiah, who will possess the mountains of Esau? A. The Moabites B. The Edomites C. The Israelites D. The Babylonians You get 10 seconds of... That's C, the Israelites. Obadiah chapter 1, verse 21. Saviors will come to Mount Zion to judge Esau's mountains and the kingdom will belong to the Lord. This signifies that the Israelites will possess their enemy's territory under God's justice, highlighting his sovereignty and plan for restoration and vindication. Question 22. What did Amos see in his vision that represented God's judgment? A. A plumb line B. A burning fire C. A swarm of locusts D. A basket of ripe fruit You get 10 seconds. That's A, a plumb line. In Amos chapter 7, verses 7 to 9, Amos saw a vision of a plumb line in God's hand, symbolizing his standard of righteousness. God stood by a straight wall, signifying he would no longer overlook Israel's sins. This vision foretold the coming judgment on Israel for their injustices, emphasizing the importance of integrity and the consequences of failing God's standards. Question 23. According to Micah, where will the Lord's house be established in the last days? A. On the seashore. B. On the highest mountain. C. In the valley. D. In the desert. You get 10 seconds. That's B, on the highest mountain. In Micah chapter 4, verse 1, it is prophesied that the Lord's house will be established as the highest mountain and exalted above the hills. People will stream to it. This signifies Jerusalem as a future center of worship and guidance for all nations, highlighting God's universal kingdom and the coming era of peace and justice. Question 24. What did Jonah say was the reason for the storm that threatened to destroy the ship he was on? A. The sailor's sins. B. A natural disaster. C. His disobedience to God. D. The ship's faulty construction. You get 10 seconds.
That's C, his disobedience to God. In Jonah chapter 1, verse 12, Jonah admitted to the sailors that he caused the storm by fleeing from the Lord. He told them to throw him into the sea to calm it, acknowledging his disobedience to God's command to go to Nineveh. This event highlights the consequences of fleeing God's will and Jonah's eventual repentance. Question 25. In Joel, what is said to happen before the great and terrible day of the Lord? A. A great flood. B. A plague of locusts. C. The mountains will crumble. D. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood. You get 10 seconds. That's D. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood. In Joel chapter 2, verse 31, it is foretold that before the great and terrible day of the Lord, the sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood, signifying a time of cosmic upheaval and divine revelation leading up to the final judgment. Fantastic! How did you do on these tough questions? Whether you aced the quiz or discovered new insights, remember that the Word of God is an endless well of wisdom, always inviting us to dive deeper. If you enjoyed this quiz, give the video a thumbs up and share it with your friends and family. Let's spread the joy of learning and invite others on this biblical adventure. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more engaging quizzes and deeper biblical insights. Share your scores, questions, or suggestions for future quizzes in the comments below. Thank you for joining us. May your scriptural journey be filled with discovery and blessings. See you in the next video.